Seeing none, is there any objection to reappointing the committee as it requested to look at names for a potential award should their amendment pass? Seeing none, the committee is reappointed. And we will move on to the best series, Hugo. Mr. Buff, would you like to give her report? Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Warren. Warren Buff. Warren, hold yes. on. Are we, are we putting that into committee reports or are we going to do that in constitutional amendments? Uh, committee reports. Okay. So that, that, is that the next item? Which is all going to do the, um, <coughs> the, this is passed on first? No. Right. Yes. Is this is Jerry Sullivan. Is there any report in here? Yes, it's in Appendix Two. Unfortunately, um, we meant to have an Appendix One, but we messed up. So it's Appendix Two. Appendix 67. Page sixty-seven. Originally, I was going to put the MPC, the long MPC report, under the appendix, but when I was doing the thing, it just seemed to fit better under the committee report, so that, but I had neglected to change it from two to one. I'll fix it in the minutes. All right, Mr. Buff. Thank you, now that everyone knows where the report is in the packet, uh, we, we did try to make our report available online uh, at the beginning of July when we had it available. Uh, we, we published it on the Smobs mailing list, on the Joff Facebook group, it got picked up on File 770. We feel that this gave it some reasonable coverage and hopefully folks who care about this have had time to read what we had to say, so I'm going to try and keep these remarks brief. Uh, we do feel that the publishing industry has moved to favor series publication over standalone novels over the past 30 years. And the Hugo Awards don't exactly cope with this very well. Uh, we, we see a lot of series books nominated, but not a lot of them winning in the best novel. I, I think it would improve the health of the best novel category to recognize series work as series work and standalone novels as standalone novels. Uh, I, I believe that the proposal we've put together addresses that. Uh, the biggest question I, I know we're seeing is about why we wanted renewed eligibility. Uh, and that is largely on the principle that the Hugo Awards have had for far longer than I've been alive. Uh, that when a work is significantly expanded such that it's fundamentally a new work, uh, it can receive renewed eligibility. Uh, historically, you have examples like Flowers for Algernon winning as a best short story and later being nominated in the best novel category. Uh, there, there are a few other examples. Uh, so we wanted to try to pick the point, which I know it's a line drawing argument, uh, but that's why we had a committee arguing over this and, and settled on a compromise position, uh, where we felt that a series being expanded would make it a new a new work. You'll obviously have the have the chance to vote on this uh, probably tomorrow, given how <laughs> these business meetings tend to run. Monday. Uh, we can discuss it further then. Uh, do we have any questions for the committee? Any questions? Seeing none, the committee is Thank thanked, you. and we now get to move into. Uh, business passed on to us by previous Worldcons. Okay, how many what about the financials? Oh. The Sorry, we I did skip. Money. We don't care about money. Um, <laughs> the previous, current, and seated Worldcons have all provided written financial reports in your agendas. They are on various pages. Um, 43 and on. 40, 43 and on. I'm going to ask if there are any questions for any of the committees. Seeing none, we'll just take the reports as written and move on. Actually, what? Go ahead. Lenore Jones. Um, the Lone Stoke Starcon 3 report I find confusing. There seems to be two separate reports in here, and I would like to know 
what the distinction is between them. This is on page uh, 45. 45 and 46. Page 46 has a separate boxed report. Um, I'd like to understand the relationship between those two. Is there a representative of Lone Star Con 3 in the room? Ben. Mr. Yellow. Uh, I'd like to make it clear that I am not an official representative of Lone Star Con 2, but having worked on their finances, I'm relatively aware of most of what has gone into the report. Could you speak the, a little louder, Ben? Sure. Uh, the issue is that there are two distinct reports, one for the Lone Star Con and one for Alamo. The reason for that is that the Constitution requires that if any funds are turned over to a successor organization, that the successor organization continues to be bound by the reporting requirements in the Constitution. And since a substantial amount of funding from Lone Star was turned over to Alamo, despite the fact that, in fact, Alamo was the parent corporation, so it's not really putting it into a separate organization, but the interpretation that Alamo decided was that it was close enough that they would be bound by the reporting requirements. So there's a separate report for the Lone Star Con 2 account and the Alamo account. Three. Does that? Yes, it's Lone Star Con 3, but <laughs> picking this. Right. Sorry, I keep forgetting it's that it's the <laughs> third one uh, because the first one was the NASFIC in 85. Are there any other questions for the committees? Ms. Neal. And I do want to remind people when you come to the microphone, please state your name. I know that I may know who you are, but not everybody else does, and not everybody who will be watching the recordings does. So, Terry Neal, I just want to commend the granularity of Sasquan's report. Good job, guys. <laughs> Ms. Sullivan, I saw you rise first. This is maybe a point of information because I'm not sure if I'm appropriate. But it's about information in these financial reports. Yep. Jerry Sullivan, um, you will note in both the Kansmoff report and in the Alamo report, there is money given to the video archaeology project. Um, we are running things over about this in the fan lounge and elsewhere all weekend long. We'd like to thank these organizations very, very much for making this project possible. Thank you, Kansmoff. Thank you, Alamo. Thank you, the other contributors um, who gave to this. Mr. McCarty. Okay. Mr. McCarty. <coughs> I'm Dave McCarty. I just want to say it's in the report, but to say this out loud, so it's in the, it's in the recording. Uh, this represents the final financial report for Shikon. The money is gone. You guys thought you'd get the farm. You lost. We're done. As soon as we finish filing papers with the state of Illinois later this year, the corporation will be gone. Bye-bye. <laughs> Are there any other questions for the Worldcon committees? Seeing none, we will move on to business. Yeah. Whoop. Not too fast. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. We will move on to business passed on. The first item of business passed on was passed on to us by Shikon. <laughs> it is on page four. It is best fan cast. We set a debate time limit of six minutes. So that's three minutes in favor and three minutes against. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor of the motion? See, 